Born in 1943 in Oakland, California, John Meyer got bitten by the audio bug as a child, earning his FCC license at age 12 and working after school at KPFA radio station as a teen. By 1967, he was putting the sound system together for the Steve Miller Band's performance at the Monterey Pop Festival, when he began attracting public attention with the Glyph loudspeaker he designed and built. Soon after, Meyer was offered a position as an in-house loudspeaker designer at San Francisco's McCune Sound Service, designing and refining touring systems for artists including Creedence Clearwater Revival, Born on the Bayou. Born on the Bayou. I wanted to build sound systems that we could use for Joan Baez or Burke Backrack or Elvis Presley, which we were doing at McCune's and Cretans. In the mid-70s, Meyer was invited to help establish an acoustics laboratory at the Institute for Advanced Musical Studies in Switzerland. Right before the CD market hit with digital, we realized that digital was going to reproduce all the high frequencies. So we immediately started to work on a studio monitor that would be accurate for CD playback. This work led to John creating a subwoofer for film director Francis Ford Coppola's use with the custom quadraphonic sound system that toured with the original 70 millimeter release of Apocalypse Now. So that technology is what we took to the movie industry. We wanted to feel the helicopters and the napalm and have the audience really feel that. So linear systems will allow us to play your movies, but at the same time, you can do more things. Since founding Meyer Sound in Berkeley, California in 1979, Meyer has focused his efforts on research and development projects, covering the design, manufacture, and use of loudspeakers. The UM-1 Ultra Monitor was the first product to employ a new, patented horn loudspeaker design that reduced distortion by a factor of 10. Now we had a subwoofer that really did go down to low frequency. That attracted the Grateful Dead. Meyer repackaged the technology of the Ultra Monitor into the UPA-1. This loudspeaker had an immediate impact on theater sound, and Meyer has been innovating in the theatrical environment ever since, including his own Pearson Theater with its cutting-edge variable room acoustics. We had Herbie Hancock come in here. We had 10 different versions of things moving around the space. John Meyers and, and his newest technology gave us the opportunity to use newer algorithms, newer, more evolved system for making surround sound. So every seat is a sweet spot now. John and his team have contributed to a long list of breakthroughs and developments that have earned the company 40 U.S. and international patents, as well as numerous industry awards. And their company is still on the cutting edge, continually refining and expanding capabilities. <laughs> Now we have groups like Bass Nectar going out there that are doing very powerful low frequency. The shows are getting more spectacular. What fascinates them is more environmentally complex things. It's immersive sound, immersive visuals. There's more and more shows that are not traveling with the band. They're traveling with virtual music and stadiums are filling up with this. Today, Meyer Sound has about 300 employees and remains privately owned and operated by John and his wife, Helen, the company's executive vice president. Meyer HD1 monitors. The BPM 1P. Meyer Sound Milo. Meyer Sound. Meyer Sound Lab. For his legacy of sound engineering at the highest level, the Tech Awards is proud to recognize John Meyer by inducting him into the NAM Tech Awards Hall of Fame. Yeah.